One of my favorite podcasters believes in God, but he's unwilling to define it any further. Now, I know there are people in your life who are probably just like him, and in this podcast episode, I'm gonna hope to answer the question, how can you engage this kind of person with the gospel? What's up, guys? This is Ben Pierce from Provoke and Inspire Quick Hit, where I take something from culture and I ask the question, what would Jesus think and what would Jesus do? And hopefully in under five minutes. If you like this content, consider subscribing or rating it or leaving a comment or do something. Would you help us out? Please drive that algorithm. And as always, this podcast is part of Steiger, which is a worldwide missions organization called to reach and disciple the global youth culture for Jesus. Uh, We do that by mobilizing all followers of Jesus like yourself to reach the people in your life who won't walk into a church. For more information, you can go to steiger.org. That's S-T-E-I-G-E-R dot O-R-G. All right, let's do it. Andrew Huberman is a brilliant neuroscientist and globally influential podcaster. He covers a range of topics from depression to sleep, and his combination of scientific insights and down-to-earth attitude have gained him worldwide fame. And apparently, he believes in God. In a recent interview, he explained that the complexity of the brain simply demands the existence of a higher power. I'll just go on record. I'm very comfortable saying I believe in God. I do. I think there are many things that science can explain. Mm -hmm. There are certain things science can't explain. But I'll even go a step further, which is that all the elements of science are entirely compatible with the idea of there being. Now, despite that, he goes on to say that he is unwilling to define who or what God is and is emphatic that religion is deeply personal and should never be pushed on anyone. Andrew's brand of spirituality perfectly captures the predominant mindset of culture today. It's increasingly rare to find hardcore atheists, but you won't find many committed evangelical Christians either. The viral belief system of our day is a vague spirituality, which more than anything else seems to define itself by a lack of definition. Many of you have someone like Andrew in your life. They're spiritually open, but unwilling to define their beliefs further. The question is, how do you share Jesus with someone who seems both open and closed at the same time? I had a conversation recently that hopefully can provide some insight. I was talking with a young guy named Matt after one of our evangelistic concerts in Argentina. I asked him what he thought of our show, and he said he was inspired by our message. Matt was passionate about theater and wanted to use his platform to help people. I asked him if he believed in Jesus, and he said he was spiritually open, but didn't believe in anything specific. I felt like I should challenge him, and I said, look, I think what people long for most is deep connection and relationship. He agreed. I continued, this is especially true when life gets hard and we experience suffering. When I go through something really difficult, I don't need the idea of a person, I need the real thing. I need someone who can listen and cry with me and understand what I'm going through. In the same way, it's not enough to know God in an abstract way, like a subject or a philosophy. We need a relationship with the real person. I explain that Jesus came to earth, died and came back to life to restore our connection to God. I shared how only he can fully know us and understand everything we are going through and give us hope through it all. I asked him if he wanted to know Jesus in the way that I was talking about. And he looked at me and said, yes, I can feel what you're saying. I invited him to pray to receive Jesus and explain that he could encounter God the way I had. We prayed together that Jesus would come into his life the way he had come into mine. It was a profound experience. While people in our lives might be resistant to absolute truth and define spirituality, They are hungry for something real. They've bought into the lie that objective truth and love are somehow mutually exclusive. And therefore, accepting everything as equally valid is the right approach. But just like my friend after the show, if we take the time to expose the emptiness of ambiguous spirituality, and we invite the Holy Spirit to demonstrate his power, people will respond. We live in a time of extraordinary openness. People are experiencing the hopelessness of materialism and are hungry for something more. Now more than ever, we need to be gentle with people's doubts, but clear with what's true. My prayer for Andrew Huberman, Matt, and those in your life like them is that in their spiritual curiosity, they would find the courage to push past the superficial, encounter the living God, and surrender fully to the only true source of life and peace.